technology is the most powerful change in the world of education. Welcome to the video interview series Augmented Reality Based Technology in the Classroom, delivered to you by Clever Books Company. Hello, dear listeners. Hello, dear viewers. Uh, we have a fantastic guest uh, today at our podcast interview, Augmented Reality in Education. Matthew, hello. Hello. Well, thank you very much for being with us today, and I'm so looking forward to hearing your professional opinion on the topic of augmented reality in education, and I would be glad to give you the word now to introduce yourself and say who you are, what, what you do, and where you're located. Okay, well, uh, I'm Matthew Bell. I am uh, currently working at the International School of Estonia in Estonia, um, but I'm originally from Scotland, and I've done some teaching there as well. So, Tell me a little bit more about uh, the level of knowledge uh, of augmented reality applications that maybe you came across and in general the topic uh, in application to education sector. So when I was first hearing about augmented reality it was largely to do with um, like mathematics uh, where I first heard of the technology we're talking about um, was through yourselves through clever books um, and their use in uh, creating like well three-dimensional models of, of uh, shapes so uh, it was it was when I was just looking for a new way to to engage students and to make them kind of think in three dimensions like taking the paper examples the flat kind of three-dimensional representations and bringing it more into something like tangible that they can look and almost feel um, look at and almost feel so when I first downloaded the app and looked at some of the, uh, the shapes, it immediately became clear that the, the technology was, was fantastic. I, I, I loved looking at it. I loved seeing what was on offer there. Um, I've heard from colleagues as well that have been out. They've uh, come across augmented reality apps for, for like biology. So like having a printed t-shirt, you can look at the t-shirt through some sort of uh, app on your iPad or phone and see like circulatory system or different organs and like exploring uh, different things like that. Um, so in terms of augmented reality, I'm familiar with the technology. I've used virtual reality in class before as well. Um, I teach science and maths. So, mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things I did when I was doing like the solar system was to bring in my uh, Oculus Rift right. and have them fit through like a, a little universe fly through in one of, the, uh, one of the games there, which was very well received as well. So I'm all for bringing technology into, into teaching these days. If we talk about the benefits of bringing immersive technologies in the classroom, uh, what mm -hmm. do you think the maybe two or three main uh, aspects that you'd really point out that make the experience really learning and uh, also helping kids to achieve bigger progress? Uh, I, think, I think one of the things that struck me when I started using the technology was uh, was, was how immersive and engaging it was. Uh, as soon as kids were able to, or as soon as students were able to look at a shape through the viewfinder, their first instinct was to play with it. Which to me, I, I love, I love play-based learning. I love when kids just look at something and they just get so naturally curious about it that they want to learn about it. And you can, I saw that immediately when I had the, the AR in front of them. They would pick up their iPad, they'd look at the shape, and suddenly it springs to life, and they're in, and they're, they're going around, and they're trying to see what's happening. Um, and before I could even explain what the task was to them, they'd already figured out what I wanted them to do and started doing it, just naturally, just by, by play. So I think that's one of the big, big, big strengths of, of AR is this kind of, uh, it gives a, a tangible feeling to something that's inherently a little bit untangible or intangible. That we see a flat drawing of, you know, like a cuboid or a triangular prism, then suddenly when it pops out of the page or it, it kind of appears in real life and you can look around at it, it, it becomes so much more. And uh, it really helped help them engage with, with this idea and, and see, you know, how 2D can become 3D. Um, particularly, I think it's really good for visual learners, uh, people who, who, are, who benefit from seeing an example. I know that a lot of the students I have um, that are looking at things like surface area uh, often struggle with the idea of, of translating what they know in two dimensions to three dimensions. So for example, mm -hmm. um, we were doing just area of shapes and everyone's like, yeah, yeah, this is fine, we've got this, we've got this, it's easy. Um, and then as soon as I introduced the concept of surface area, you know, the area of, of surfaces in three dimensions, everyone was like, no, 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 what's this? This is completely foreign, what's going on? And it wasn't until we, we had a little look and I brought the app in and I thought, you know, if I just press this button, here's the 3D shape, 
it unfolds, you see the 2D net that makes up the 3D shape. Suddenly, light bulbs. Oh, that's all it is. Yeah, it's, it's so nice to see these, these moments of, of, of uh, suddenly just getting it, these light bulb moments I like to, I like to look at. Um, so for me, it was really good for visual, learn, uh, for visual learners. Another thing I experienced is because we're an international school, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of students that come from various different backgrounds whose uh, first language isn't always English. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, the big benefits for me was that these students uh, were really, really engaged as well because it's the same thing. It's, it's visual. You look at it and you get it. The concept is there for the taking. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't need to, to explain things. Usually I would spend you know, a few more minutes going around differentiating properly, making sure that the instructions were clear or breaking a task down into small chunks for these students. But as soon as they saw the three-dimensional representation, as soon as they saw it in real life, this augmented reality, they just sprung straight to it and had an immediate understanding of what was put in front of them. So I think those are some of the, the biggest points for me is just the kind of the engagement, uh, the accessibility, and just generally the, the kind of light bulb moment thing, just the concept, uh, the power of imparting a concept to someone. And which age group did you uh, test application with? So, so this application I tested um, with, with students while it wasn't okay. the primary sector that the, the app was really aimed at, mm -hmm. but that being said, like these concepts are powerful. It doesn't matter whether they're applied so long as they're applied uh, with a context. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying when it comes to calculating surface area or even more complex things. Uh, for example, when we're looking at calculating like uh, the angle between like certain vertices and planes for like mm -hmm. later on in maths applications. It was just it was even useful then to look at something in three D and see like well it's that point connected to this point. Mm -hmm. um, it helps a lot to, to have that. So although it wasn't quite the age it was aimed at, I found use for this throughout the uh, the curriculum. In a sense that, uh, in general, augmented reality app, you've mentioned that you've used quite a few and your colleagues have used also different augmented reality apps. Uh, they're not just for a specific um, like topic uh, for a short-term implementation or one-off implementation during the whole unit of inquiry, but it's more that something that you can come back to within the uh, school year to teach different aspects within the subject. Do you think it would be relevant? I think I think it could be relevant as it stands right now. Um, that there is, I would say it's more like if you're looking at the curriculum like a spiral as you're moving up through the levels. It's something that can can continue coming back and says, remember this. Here's another layer. Here, remember this. Here's another layer on top of that. Um, it's very good. Uh, and doing that, I think um, as it stands, it needs to be a little bit more flexible to have it like come in multiple times in the same year, uh, but it's, it's, it is good enough or is flexible enough at the moment to kind of look at it in, in different lights. So, you know, when you say about, you know, area and surface area or maybe just basic shapes or polygons or nets or general things like this, even internal angles as well, something that looks at in the app. There, there's many different areas that you can bring into it. Um, so in some ways, yes, you can use the app in multiple times during the year in different parts of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. But I find most success when I was looking at it as we go up the up the layers and kind of just as a reminder or just to break it down a little bit more as a reminder. And many teachers are saying and many educators are saying that augmented reality is still very new, it's uh, still emerging. And what do you think from your uh, opinion, what would be actually a way to, for educators to say, yes, this is something that we really need to bring into the class? Many people say that augmented reality for now, it's nice to have, but not must have. So what do you think would be actually the, the changing point between nice to have to must have? Um, I think at the moment, I, I probably agree. It's, it's nice to have it. It's not something that I, I can't do without, but it is something that's a very powerful tool when used correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we want to implement it into, into the curriculum, first of all, it needs to be flexible. Like the um, the... Uh, system itself needs to be such that uh, if I'm going to be trying to do a certain topic, I need to be able to bring this in in multiple instances. Um, it seems really, really nice as it is with certain parts, but I feel like generally we need to, to have it be more flexible so it hits multiple parts of the curriculum. Um, the the second, second part, I would say, is... Um, to make sure that whatever we are doing is in some way measurable, like like um, 
when we look at like like textbooks or things, we're able to to assess um, like student engagement and student learning quite easily. You know, do you remember this formula? Can you apply that formula? Um, the augmented reality helps bring that understanding forward, but I think until a point where we can say like definitively like, this makes a large difference. Like, look at this test score compared to this test score. Until we have some data that shows that augmented reality is the difference or the, the key, I think it'll be hard to convince people to bring it into the uh, into the curriculum. Mm -hmm. I mean, I personally love it. I mean, I, I think augmented reality is fantastic. Virtual reality as well is, is great. Um, but uh, but until there's like some hard statistics, uh, I think it's going to be difficult to, to convince people to move away from more traditional methods. I mean, some of the colleagues that I have um, are very, very interested in augmented reality. Uh, but mm -hmm. sometimes so it's a technological difference. I mean, for me, I'm quite a young teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, but for some of my colleagues, we're, we're talking like like a generation, two generations worth of gap between where I am with my teaching and my methodologies and where they are with theirs. Um, so, so sometimes it's a matter of just you know convincing people, you know, this is the future and we should get used to it and it's something that we should uh, invest in. Because one of the one of the guiding principles I have is that whatever I'm doing, I should be using current technology. Because when these kids, when these students leave our schools, where they're going out to is, is the workplace, and whatever workplace that is, it's probably going to be trying to keep keep itself modern, keep itself uh, forward thinking, and on the cusp of like modern technology. So these kids need to be prepared, or at least familiar, with with lots of the emerging technologies that we have. And this is one of the things that I think is really important. So if we can, or if and when augmented reality starts to catch on in a big way, I think we'll see a massive rise in the amount of interest in bringing augmented reality into schools. I mean, we see a lot of things at like press conferences and like tech companies showing off what they can do with augmented reality, but until that translates to the, like, the home situation, I think a lot right. of people will struggle to see the value in augmented reality. No, it's a very interesting point. Thank you very much. And in terms of the challenges that uh, teachers, you've mentioned that the gap difference uh, between and the teaching style and the methodology, etc. What do you think are the main challenges uh, for, um, for for teachers to actually accept the immersive technologies and try them out, uh, not as a primarily teaching aid, but as a supplementary uh, aid for uh, teaching certain levels of curriculum? I think right now where its strength is, is is in differentiation. Like for me, when when it comes to explaining concepts, uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to kind of convey these kind of um, more thought heavy things. So I'm going to take the example of this three dimensional objects again because it's the one I've been using. Um, like when students are struggling with a concept that they can't see something or they're not immediately able to to engage with the material, if we have someone who has like additional learning needs or something like this, um, then then this is where it really shines because when they see it, they they're immediately en engrossed by it. I've I've had so many kids come through and they've, they've looked at it and just suddenly went wow. And the, this is the play aspect coming in again. They see it as a game. They see it something fun that's turned what is mundane, what was a boring maths lesson into something that's, that's much more. It's, it's uh, suddenly interactive, they can play, they can press buttons and things change and as they explore, they learn. Um, and I think this is, this is like one of the, the, main, the main strengths of, of the AR here and trying to get people to take it on. I mean, maybe just seeing it as an alternative to, to some things. Like uh, when it comes to teaching shapes, um, I was looking at one exercise I had was like making nets for 3D shapes. Um, for one of my, my grade years, and it was very hard for me to explain. Like, well, you need to you need to draw this rectangle here and connect it to, to like this triangle here, and then and then fold it all over, and then kind of glue it in place, and then you've made your model. Um, it was very hard to kind of communicate that to to, for example, some of the Russian students I have, or some of the Sweden, Swedish students I have. Um, but in this case, uh, I pulled out this app and showed them, and it just went, whoop, and they went, oh, whoop, ah, and this was this was like one of these immediate kind of aha moments. It, it, it cut down so much of the the trouble I would otherwise have had, and allowed for like immediate uh, engagement. So so in this case, I think um, when it comes to differentiation for for students that are like less academically um, and able compared to or with students that have trouble interfacing with like the normal class situation who have like ELL needs or 
uh, English language learning needs. Um, then I think this is where its, it's, most, its biggest strength is. You mentioned that before I had the chance to ans ask this question because I was going to ask you what do you think and how do you think it would benefit kids with special needs or a less academic children who needs this visual support maybe? I, I think from, from my experience it is, is a fantastic tool and uh, is, is something that really brings people together because I've had, I've had the top end of the class and the bottom end of the class and everyone's mixed and everyone's together, everyone's feeling this excitement about it and uh, it really it really does it brings it brings everyone together in such a such a lovely way um, from my experience with this this particular example i mean i've seen some of the things um, with, with like geography as well and some of the apps there and it seems really nice to have this this really powerful visual that it doesn't need language to explain it's very very obvious what's happening and what you're seeing so i think it's it's quite quite elegant in that way and uh, I guess you did mention that teachers are always looking for ways to make their lessons more engaging, more interacting, and fun. And uh, maybe this is one of the tools why many say that it's nice to have because it does provide uh, this kind of sense of opportunity to create such environments in the classroom. One of my teach one of one of the people who I worked with very during my very first uh, first year of education always gave me a certain motto, and it was uh, "Work smarter, not harder." Um, and, then, and, one, this, yeah. and, and in this case, uh, this is this is a perfect example of, of this. You know, where where I was going to be spending so much time with like differentiation or like setting aside and putting in that extra work and spending that time, it it really saved me a, a lot of effort, a lot of time in bringing everything together. Uh, it was one of these tools that as soon as I pressed go, everyone was so interested in learning that I didn't even need to be there in some cases. Like I, I feel like. My role was as facilitator. I wasn't leading them in any point there. I was just said, here's an app. Let's have a look at some shapes. Let's see what we can find out. Let's see what we can discover. And then away they went. And I think that, that kind of inquiry-based learning where they just they want to find the answer to their own questions. They set out their goals. You know, okay. as, soon as, they saw, as soon as they saw a cube and pressed the unfold button, they were like, wow, that's really cool. And then they saw the hexagon like, oh, so if we make a hexagonal prism. And then they saw it unfolding and then... Then they had the idea. Well, let's let's build some ourselves. So they started building some of them themselves, and it, it, it took a lot of the the pressure off of me. Where you know I was starting off in my mind with this massive lesson plan, thinking about how to um, explain what a net was and how two D shapes can be made in three D shapes and folding and everything. And it just it all came together without me having to even say a word. Nearly, uh, it, it was beautiful. So I think this is one of the one of the cool parts uh, for, for this app in the particular. And it's interesting that you mentioned that uh, in a sense uh, that it didn't quite require a lot of lesson planning, as, uh, did I understand correctly? Mm -hmm. And one of the questions actually teachers do ask as well, um, or prefer uh, to have already made lesson plan on how to use certain augmented reality application. What, to your opinion, would be more beneficial uh, to have such a lesson plan, say that this is exactly what you need to do with this particular application? Or the teachers would actually prefer to have um, freedom uh, and just have a tool and then decide themselves on how to implement it, where to implement it. I think um, when, when anyone's first starting off, remember for me, a lot of the, the problem I had was this kind of sense of uncertainty. Like I wanted to meet the curriculum expectations from all the documentation that I had wanted to make sure the kids had a worthwhile experience. I had everything planned out to the nearest minute of, of what I was expecting to happen in a lesson. And I think everyone can agree that as useful as that is, it doesn't always work that way in, in practice. Um, if I was to, to say about making lesson plans for these particular apps, I think the most important part of it actually isn't so much that you, that you plan exactly what needs to be done with the app. I think that's actually quite destructive rather than constructive in this case. I think what you need to do is have some specific questions that you want to find the answer to. Mm -hmm. Set out a couple of questions right at the very start of the lesson. Like, this is the focus for today. Try and answer these questions. One, two, three. Okay, they and decide how to count in a sense. And then, let, then let, let the kids play. And let them go out, let them use the technology, let them figure it out. Because the first thing I realized was, I, was, I had a whole section set, set aside for telling them how to use the app and how to how to like best view things, and it, it 
for all the time it would have taken me to explain it, they'd already learned it. Like <laughs> the kids these days are fantastic. They're very they're advanced, just, they aren't they, with technology? They, 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 you know, they, they, they almost, you know, they almost come out of the hospital with an iPad in their hands at this point. It's unbelievable how advanced they can be. Um, we, we see them, you know, even in preschool sometimes with iPads that when they come in from home, say, oh, I use this app, or oh, I'm on, you know, YouTube and I'm subscribed to this, this, and this, and you're like, what? How do you do that? Uh, but um, but th these kids have an intuitive grasp of how these things work. And uh, I think the design of the apps in general have been very good. Um, and they just need to explore. Like, like they do, kids don't mind pushing buttons. Kids don't mind making mistakes. Adults mind making mistakes. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't want to make a mistake. You know, I don't want to say the wrong word or end up with a, with a red face after embarrassing myself. I could just, oops, oh well, try the next thing. You don't mind. And... I think this this freedom uh, is, is something to be embraced rather than you know hammered away and put into a structure. I think you know I think certain questions to guide the lesson to let them know what you want them to learn are, is good. But like like lesson plans for a whole lesson kind of detract from the experience that they're going to have. Like as I remember, some of the best lessons I've ever I've ever delivered or even been part of since I'm so young, I've oh. uh, always been the ones. I've always been the ones that that kind of went off the rails a little bit. You know, that they kind of like we have we have a path and we have what we want to learn. But tangent, eh, tangentially to that, there's always been this kind of um, interesting area where the kids have some sort of question, and you're like, I never thought of that. Yeah, what, why does that happen? You <laughs> know, and these are the parts that people remember. People that kids really learn from is these kind of these play moments, these moments where they find out the unexpected, and uh, I think they're, the, they're the, the best. So to answer, yeah, some structure is required, but mm. for the love of God, not too much structure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for uh, your opinion. It's very valuable. And in terms of if you say uh, maybe to teachers that haven't started using augmented reality or just, you know, knew the concept that augmented reality can be used in the classroom uh, to benefit kids mm -hmm. learning what would be your probably two or three suggestions what they should start with what they should start with uh, my biggest suggestion would be start by getting the app and playing yourself okay like, like, it's as simple as that uh, the thing that I that I realized when I was looking at this my first reaction was mm, this could be a bit messy to implement you know like like we, we have textbooks we have resources uh, we have videos, we have all of these different multimedia sources coming in to, to help uh, deliver our lessons. Um, and when I first saw this app, I thought, is it just, it's just another thing on the side, on the periphery. And I had that feeling, like, it's not a big thing yet. I know of it, like uh, I've heard of it, I've seen it in action, but how useful is it in the classroom? And I don't think anyone can really gauge um, truly the impact uh, that this technology has in the classroom until they actually try it themselves. So I would, first big point is just get hands on. Just just download it, have a look at it, play with it yourself. And as during that play yourself, you'll have ideas. Because that's what happened to me. When I started playing with it, I went, oh, I could use it for this. <gasps> what about that? Mm, yeah. And all these ideas just, just, came, just came bursting forth. Um, so it's really just a matter of getting hands on and making sure that, that you know, the technology isn't unfamiliar to you. Um, just embrace it, become part of it. And if you hate it, that's fine. You know, no, one, no one's forcing you to, to use AR, no one's forcing you to go wild. But, um, but try it, is my main advice, is just to go out there and get it and get dirty. Okay. Well, Matthew, so much for being with us today. Is there anything that we've missed and you would really like to share uh, with our listeners and our viewers? I don't know. I, th I think the main thing would just be watch this space. I think uh, I think like AR um, socially will become a larger part of, of what we're doing in, in, in future years. I think that um, AR in education will also go as a result of this. And I think that just just keep an open mind and, and an open heart to, to new techniques and new ideas. And eventually it will creep in because uh, I feel that the technology is powerful. Um, it, it is useful and it is definitely applicable to, to many of the outcomes that we have in the, in the system here.
Yeah. Well, thank you very much for such a fantastic interview and uh, for sharing your opinion and your experience. Very much valuable. Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. Everything changes.